In this video, we're going to look at how to create a simple hash table in Python. In order to understand this video, you'll need to have a prior understanding of subroutines, arrays, and hash tables. Let's get started. So what is a hash table? Well, the easiest way to understand a hash table is to see it as an array or a data structure which uses an algorithm to slot items in with the use of keys. A key is given along with the data. Then the algorithm is used to turn the key into an index position, which we use to place the item of data into the array with. Now that's all good, but what exactly is involved in this algorithm? The answer, anything you want. There isn't actually a fixed method for the hashing algorithm in a hash table. The programmer actually decides the algorithm themselves. In an exam, the algorithm may be described for you. In this video, we're going to look at a simple hash table algorithm. The process will involve taking the number entered and then performing a modulus operation against the amount of items in the hash table. Uh, this will result in the position we place it in. For example, if we uh, have 10 items in our hash table and we entered the number 22 as the key, the index position will be 2. As well as this, uh, hash tables should also allow you to search, insert, and delete items from the table array. Open your Python IDE and follow along as we create this hash table. In this code here, we are setting up the blank array, which we will use with our hash algorithm to enter data into later. Line two is only there, so when you run it, you can see what the array looks like. At present, it will look like this. You can remove line two if you wish to, but keep line one as it is for now. We will change it later though. Below what we just wrote, let's create this function for the hashing algorithm. This one single line in the function will be used to generate the position in the list each item will be placed in. You can see here we're taking the key and performing a modulus with the length of the hash table, which is exactly what I mentioned earlier. To test this program, I've written lines 6, 7 and 8, so you can see what the function is doing, and here you can see the results. Once we've got the algorithm, we need to be able to insert the data into the hash table. That's what we do here. First, we add a subroutine called insert. This subroutine takes in the hash underscore table, a key, and a value as parameters. In line eight, we then run the hashing underscore function with the key, so that the key is translated into an index. The data value is then placed in the index position of the hash table as shown in line 9. We can test this out by using lines 12 and 13. 10 mod 10 is 0, so therefore Nepal is placed in position 0, which you can see here. Feel free to pause the video here and play around with the code to see how to change the index a value is placed in. Through playing around with the code, you may have come across a slight problem. If we enter another value, which is given the index 0, the item already in position 0 gets replaced and is lost forever. We need to find a solution to fix this problem of collision. There are two methods for this. One is called linear probing. This is where um, if one position is being used, the value is placed in the next available position. The other method, however, which is what we are going to use, is called chaining. This allows multiple items to exist in the same slot or index. Let's take a look at this in Python now. To do this, we're going to need some changes. 
uh, to part of our code. The hash underscore table code needs to be replaced with this. Um, this will create a list that looks more like this. Here we have created an empty multi-dimensional array. For the insert function, we're keeping the first line the same. But once we've got our key turned into an index, we're going to want to also place the key inside of the array. The best way to make this happen is to turn it into a string value. Lines 9 and 10, then add the key uh, to the data value into our list. Notice here we're using append, so even if there is already a data item in that index, it will add the new item into the index array, but in the last position. I'm using lines uh, 12 to 16 to test this out, and you can see I get this result. Each key is entered and followed by the data value. This is going to be important when we go to search for an item. For the search function, you can see some familiar lines here. In line 20, I use a variable called bucket. The purpose of this is to hold the place of the index array our item should appear in. We're using hash underscore key variable to find the index within the hash underscore table, and we're storing that in this bucket. We then make use of this within the nested indefinite iteration lower down by checking which item in this array called bucket matches our key. Once we find the key, the data value will be the next item after, which is why we have count plus one in line 25. There's quite a lot going on in this function, so pause the video here to examine the rest of this code. Next, we've got the delete function. Once you understand how the search function works, this function is fairly easy to understand, as it follows the exact instructions as a search function, but instead of displaying the item to the user, we actually delete it within the if statement. Notice line 40 and 41 are the exact same. The reason for this is because line 40 deletes the key. We also then need to delete the data value. However, once you delete the key, the data value actually enters the index the key was in. So therefore we have to repeat the line. Pause the video here and try this code out for yourself to see what happens. The final function I created was this menu, probably one of the easier parts of the code. This allows the user to call each of the different functions within the program. You can see the menu is called after any function has been completed. Once you've done this, don't forget to call the menu outside of your function and the program is ready. And that's everything you need to know about creating a hash table in Python. Hash tables can be quite complicated at first, so if you didn't understand this, feel free to replay the video and try again. Each time you write new code, play around with it, mess the code up, and see the results. You'll understand it all soon if you haven't already.